Hey Rep Bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a Valheim video. Today I'm going to take you through how to craft all of the brand new weapons in Valheim. There's a ton of info to go over. I'm not just going to show you them in creative mode. I'm going to talk to you and hopefully show as best I can. We'll also go over some of their stats as well. So let's go. So first off, you're going to obviously need a Black Forge. This is where the vast majority of the brand new stuff is crafted. Of course it needs black marble, that's what you get from the petrified bone or maybe some of the ruins that you've harvested. Idrisil wood, which you can get from the smaller little branches of the Idrisil tree or the roots. Five black cores, of course you'll find inside the new infested mines. And as always, a workbench. Now there is an upgrade for this, the black forge cooler. It's five iron, five copper, four black marble. At the moment it's the only one. What's interesting though is that you can go ahead, in creative mode at least, and upgrade everything up to level 4 or 3. So I'm presuming they'll add more abilities to upgrade it in the future. There'll be more add-ons for this particular Black Forge. But at the moment in creative mode it looks like it's just a glitch. Okay, first things first. The Carapace Spear is probably going to be the first one that you might want to upgrade. It does 115 pierce, block force of 20. You'll need 10 Idrisil wood for it, 4 Carapace and 2 Mandibles. And if you want to upgrade it, you're going to need 5 Idrisil Wood, 4 Carapace and 1 Mandible. Doing so would increase the Pierce damage from 115 to 121. So by now I'm sure you've worked out you get the Carapace from the Seekers that you fight, but the Mandibles only drop, I do believe, from the Soldiers and maybe Brutes as well. No real bells or whistles, it's just simply a decent upgraded Spear. Next up we've got Krom. This might be the first weapon that you actually craft. Given it's only 30 iron and 20 bronze, plus 5 of the scale hide, which you get from the hares. The hares can be tricky buggers, you might want to see if you can use a trap, or otherwise just run up to them with a lot of stamina and melee them, as I found it really difficult to hit them with a bow unless they were right in front of me. And weirdly, you can't cook their meat. Of course you'll find iron scraps in these giant massive ancient weapons and armour pieces, but you will need the brand new black pickaxe to break through. And the bronze might be a bit harder as you'll obviously need some tin. I haven't yet come across any deposits of it near the water as much as maybe I thought. But you do get plenty of copper scraps also from some of the boxes you'll find in some of the Diverger Dwarf Towers or encampments or ruins. It is an absolute beast of the weapon, just look at the size of it. You can really feel the weight of carrying it around. The animations aren't the most stable thing, I would say. I'm kind of sliding around while using it. And obviously it has got the alternative tack. But yeah, for sure, absolutely beastly. That triple damage doing 102. So it's got slash of 150, uses 20 of your stamina, block armor of 52, block force of 50. Its weight is 4, and it's got a durability of 200. If we go and upgrade it, it's going to cost 15 iron, 10 bronze and 5 scale hides and that increases it not by much I would have to say to 156 and the block force also is now 60. After that you've got the brand new skull and Haiti dual wielding weapons, 4 fine wood, 10 iron and 10 black metal. Now again I don't think I've come across too much black metal at all in the Mistlands but the majority of the Mistlands does border usually some sort of planes so hopefully it won't be too hard to get hold of. It's got a slash of 45, pierce of 45, use stamina of 14, a block armor of 24, block force of 10, parry bonus of 4 times, not back of 10, backstab of 6 times. It's extremely light, only 0.3. Absolutely loving the look of this, and it does show that I think in future we're going to get more dual wielding, particularly daggers by the looks of things. Grimcore, one of the Valheim devs, kind of alluded to this in future, that we might see more dual wielding stuff incoming. So obviously it does use quite a bit of stamina pretty quickly and yeah, absolutely ripping up things. They are super cool, I absolutely love the look of these. Graded the slash is increased to 46, pierce 46. Now again, the actual slash and pierce doesn't go up by much, at literally only 1% to 46 respectively for slash and pierce. You do get a block force increase though by 5, but yeah, that's all really the benefit of it is so far. So it may be just slight glitch, I think, with the damage numbers, or maybe, yeah, that's it. It's just only really meant to get a marginal increase because it's already quite powerful. And of course, depending on your skill, obviously durability might increase. The daggers are especially nice with the first hit being 40, and if you get the second one in, another 40, with a third one being anything between 70 and 80, maybe more. Even with the dual wielding, you can actually do the stealth attack. 
but as always you've got to time it right. Another one that you might think about early in the game is Arbalest, it's the brand new crossbow, it's got a pierce of 200, a block armor of 3, parry bonus of 1.5, a knockback of 210 and it weighs 1.5 with only a durability of 50. It costs 10 wood, 8 iron and only 4 roots. I am slightly disappointed we can't craft this until we get to the Mistlands. I presumed it would be like a sort of balancing weapon that we'd be able to get hold of a bit earlier. But Grim said nope, it's got to be crafted at the Black Forge of course, so you won't be getting this until you've crafted the Black Forge. Make sure you save up some roots or take them with you. And I'm presuming you know where to get the roots from the Abominations. If you're watching this video you must be pretty advanced or maybe just intrigued, but yeah, you get this from the, the Abominations in the Swamp. So then you've got four different bolts and it goes in all the other bone bolts with 32, iron bolts with 42, black metal bolts with 62 and carapace bolts at 72. Now once it's loaded it's primed to go, there is no aiming with this, you've got to get your aim and shot on, there's no pullback on it, so it's pretty much an instant shot. And you can see even when you unload a shot it pushes you back slightly as well, so you might want to make sure you've got a good foot in. You also can't reload while running. So something to bear in mind. And that's pretty much the last set of weapons you can craft using non kind of ether based stuff. The rest of them do require the refined ether. Now I have done a guide already explaining magic and how to get the ether, but you should know by now you get the refinery. And yeah, you're going to have to plant a lot of the sap extractors in the Idrisil tree, get a lot of the soft flesh, which I mentioned earlier a little bit, that's inside petrified skulls. So obviously the same place that you get the black marble. So I'll leave the link to that in the comment section and it should be in the end screen as well if you want more details. So you're going to need a lot of that ether. You really are going to have to set up massive farms if you want to have a magic based character or you just want to be able to craft and upgrade a bunch of these weapons. And we've got the spine snap. 10 fine wood, 40 bone fragments, 10 refined ether. Does piercing a 72 but a spirit of 5. Draw stamina is 14, block armor is 3, block fall 0, parry bonus at 1.5, not back 25. If you want to upgrade it, you'll just need 5 fine wood and 20 bone fragments. You don't actually need any more ether. It'll increase the pierce by 4 and the spirit by 5. Now, of course, it'll work with all the different arrows, but the new carapace arrows you can see here do pierce a 72. So, by far better than the needle arrows with only 62, although they both have the same knockback. What I particularly like about it, it does glow red. And it does seem to have a much quicker drawing shot. Absolutely winning the best prize for the coolest looking weapon maybe, certainly in range nowadays. But of course you still need to have some good skill with the bow to really use it. So all round, fantastic brand new weapon. So we're on to the Mistwalker Sword. Slash 75, Frost 40. Stamina of 16, Block Armor 48, yada yada yada, Fine Wood of 3, 15 Iron, 10 Refined, Aoife and 3 Wisps. The wisps, if somehow you haven't caught that, you're going to need to build a wisp a fountain using Yagloth's drop. And obviously this is some of the basic gear you should be not going into the mistlands without crafting. It only refills at night, but you should be able to grab a couple or at least three or four maybe each night. Now interestingly, on its own, it just does the slash and frost. But as soon as you upgrade it to level 2, you also gain 5 spirit. Again, it only increases slightly its frost damage by 1 point and block force increases by 5 as well, meaning it could become more of a versatile weapon to use in different biomes, especially obviously against race and anything else a little bit more magical. But with the sword you're looking at around 200, the first two hits being anywhere between 45 and maybe 52, and then the third combo hit being maybe 100. The other benefit of the Mistwalker sword of course is it does help get rid of the mist. You'll see the mist dissipate before your eyes. It's a pretty cool freaking looking sword. The ice damage particularly seems to be good against some of the seekers and it should help out with a little bit of a glow during any nighttime excursions into the rest of the bios. Then we've got Jotun's Bane, it's obviously a brand new one handed axe, slash of 80, 40 poison, uses stamina of 16, block armor of 48, block force of 20, parry bonus 2 times, not back 60, backstab times 3, you'll need 15 iron, 5 Idrisil wood, and five bile bags, not to mention 10 refined ether. Now the bile bags of course you get from the new goal flying enemies. Your best bet is to use obviously ranged if you have managed to get a arbalester out and fire damage to increase the amount of output you're doing on it while it's flying around. If you do get attacked by the ticks you need to roll and that should get rid of any of them. 
and use something like an Atga to keep him at range as well. Now when you upgrade it you are going to get an additional 5 slash and again another 5 block falls. You will need an additional 10 iron, another bile bag and one refined ether. Sadly unlike the mist walker this won't dissipate any of the mist although it does have that poisonous glow on it as well. It does also benefit from the brand new axe animations. There is now an alternative attack for some of the axes. Let's go and use it to obviously be a bit more powerful. Yotan Axe does give some poison as well, a small timed buff, but I'm not too sure if it's effective against Seekers. For Hammer fans, we've got the new Demolisher. 145 blunt damage, 28 usage of your stamina, block armor of 52, block force of 50. It's got a knockback of 210. Gonna need 10 refined ether, 20 iron, and 10 Idrisil wood. To upgrade it, you'll need another 15 iron, 2 ether, and 2 Idrisil wood. So pretty cheap, other than just the iron. We get a 6 increase in the blunt and a block force of 10 extra. It's an absolute beast of a weapon. It's pretty powerful, it can destroy certain things in one hit. I don't think this is the best weapon to use against these guys. Soldiers are hard to stun, I don't think you can stun them with any weapon really, even the brand new Edgar that has lightning damage that stuns some of the smaller ones. But I did feel like this just wasn't as good. It's probably better for ticks and some of the Verger dwarves and maybe some other creatures that you'll come across in the rest of the game. But yeah, I just didn't feel like the amount of time it takes a swing, the amount of stamina uses up, is so slow that you might be able to get hit off. And last out of the regular sort of style weapons is of course the brand new Acre, the Himen Athol. With a pierce of 85, lightning damage of 40, uses 20 stamina, Block armor of 64, block force of 40, parry bonus of 2, not back of 40, backstab of 3. You'll need 10 Idrisil wood to craft it, 15 refined ether, 5 silver, and 2 mandible. To upgrade it, you're going to need 15 ether, 5 silver, and another 2 mandible. Upgrading it will give you an extra 6 lightning damage. Kind of wish it was like the mist walker, that it would dissipate some of the mist as you're walking through it given it's got that lightning kind of uh, vibe. It will stun most creatures other than maybe the soldiers or the brutes. And it's pretty effective at dealing with them, by far giving some of the best damage outputs in a single blow. And if you manage to get the triple hit on, then you're gonna get something close to 180 to nearly 200. So now on to, of course, probably the most exciting stuff, the brand new staves. Now I've shown these off briefly in another little video talking about magic. But of course it's all about the Staff Protection, Staff of Frost, the Staff of Embers and of course the Dead Razor. So the Idrisil Wood costs 20, 10 Bone Fragments, 15 Refined Aether and 1 Rancid Remains Trophy for the Dead Razor. It uses 100 of your Aether, also takes away 40% of your health. Upgrade it, you're going to need another 10 Idrisil Wood, 4 Bone Fragments and 2 Refined Aether. Doesn't change any of the values but it should mean that you can summon more creatures. So if you upgrade the staff, you should be able to summon at least two of these guys. If you do the protection ward spell, it'll actually include your skeletons when they're close by. So bear that in mind, giving them some extra health. They will follow you even up some of the most sharpest inclines, but they just might take a bit longer to get up. And the longer your skill or the bigger your blood magic skill, I do believe that's how long they'll actually stay. They won't stay forever. It should also include or increase damage output of the skeletons. Staff Enderbuzz is 20 Idrisil wood, 4 certain cores and 15 refined ether. Does blunt and fire damage 120. It will use up 35 of your ether bar. To upgrade it, another 2 certain cores, another 2 refined ether and 10 Idrisil wood. And it will increase your fire by 6 points as well as block force again by 5. To me, clearly, magic is the winner that you should be using in the Mistlands. Although the devs have stated you don't have to mess around or do much with it at all if that's not your vibe. But obviously you will be refining that ether to make even some of the other weapons. You can see how much of a difference it does taking something out like a Seeker. So you can see I take absolutely no damage at all until it eventually breaks there. That was at least three there. So that gave me an extra three hits pretty much from this soldier. I'm guessing because of the brand new weak spots, the Seeker soldiers generally are pretty tough to get to because I'm guessing they're armoured, whereas Fire and Ice can maybe get through it a little bit quicker. Staff of Frost will do 30 frost damage, uses only 5 ether, but that's per shard that it fires. 
Block force of 50, parry bonus two times, not back of 10, and a block armor of 48. 20 Idrisil wood, 4 freeze glands, and 15 refined ether. To upgrade it, you need 10 Idrisil wood, 2 more freeze glands, and 2 more refined ether. And the difference is an additional 2 frost damage. It's not that much increase. Although you do get again the block force times 5. They are absolutely the coolest thing in Valheim. If anything, I think I would like some of the uh, ice particles to go a bit slower, just so I could actually see them a bit more, hit their targets. But it's such a cool weapon. And again, I've got a slight bugbear that they don't also de-mist. I feel like something magical like this should have the power of that. They do seem pretty effective at taking Seekers out as well, absolutely demolishing one in seconds. Originally, I thought fire was the best way to go with these guys. But after attempting an infested mine, it does, and the boss, it does seem like the ice does a little bit more damage per value in terms of ether you're using. Obviously, you just got to make sure you're a good shot. And then we've got the Star for Protection. 20 Idrisil Wood, 4 Blood Clots, and 15 Refined Ether. Again, it's going to use 40% of your health to cast it, and it uses 60 of your ether too. It'll absorb any kind of damage, and it lasts for exactly a minute. Based on your skill in blood magic, by the looks of things, that's how much it'll absorb. So right now it's saying 629 for me. But as you can see, that's because my blood magic is pretty high. So obviously the Raising Dead also uses this skill. So the stronger it is, the cheaper it should be to use, and the more damage you'll do from it. Likewise, I think that also governs how many summons you can have. If you manage to upgrade it to level 2, you actually get it for 2 minutes, so it's well worth upgrading this one. Remember, you're going to have to balance it out on what you eat, containing enough foods that have, obviously, the ether, but they generally will be quite low on stamina and health. So there we go, that is everything you need to know about all the brand new weapons in Valheim Nislands update. Hopefully that's given you some ideas about what to work on or what you should be fixing or getting ready for. Are you going to be a mage? Are you going to go with the tried and tested weapons? Or look out for the brand new Lightning Adgar. Let me know in the comment section what's your favourite. And until next time, right bags, me and Alric here will catch you later.